It can only go up from the Sooners, right? Can't go down any lower. <laughs> they better not. The Sooners are going to be missing a bowl game if they can't beat Louisiana Monroe. Sooners should coast this Saturday. And I'm going to tell you in a little bit why it is possible for OU to win this game in lopsided fashion and still not really look good in doing it. Sooners and the Warhawks. OU versus Louisiana Monroe. Game on pay-per-view Saturday, 6 o'clock kickoff Oklahoma time. Of course, the first game that the Sooners have played at home since the stadium got renovated. And you'll notice it if you go to the game. They'll probably show it on pay-per-view if you are going to watch this game on pay-per-view. The south side where the renovations uh, heavily occurred, no longer the, the gap in the south corners. Now there's additional seating. There's going to be a fan zone and some other stuff too. Um, so now it's going to be a bowl-shaped stadium. So the bigger the better, right? That's what's going to happen as far as the uh, facilities for this weekend's game at Lindsay and Jenkins Street, home of Gaylord Memorial Stadium. Again, the Sooners are, are, are a massive favorite in this game. Before I get into OU and Louisiana Monroe, um, I'm not sure if you're trying to get tickets for this game, and especially the game on September 17th against Ohio State. Of course, you know, for the OU ticket office, the, the games, unless you buy them from the, um, from the visiting fans who return their tickets through the ticket office, um, all Sooner games are sold out. Of course, there's a waiting list to get season tickets uh, that goes probably into the 2020s. And that might be kind, even with the uh, renovations of the stadium. There is an independent site. I'm not going to mention their name. Um, I don't want to give them any free advertising, but there is one independent website that sells tickets, concerts, and of course to pro and college games, including the Sooners. And the one thing I'll tell you about this website that's interesting, of course, buy tickets from this website at your own risk, okay? I don't endorse it, but this is just to give you an idea of the price discrepancy between uh, the website's um, ticket price in terms of what they're selling tickets for as far as the Louisiana Monroe game this week and the ticket prices for the Ohio State game on September 17th when the Buckeyes come to Norman. For Louisiana Monroe, there's tickets as cheap as 25 bucks. For Ohio State, that same website, the, te the uh, cheapest ticket, 260 bucks. A little bit of a difference, wouldn't you say? Just a little bit of a difference right there. But again, if you do buy tickets from those um, from those websites that really don't have a direct affiliation toward the university, buy them at your own risk. So that's all I have to say. Um, talking about Bob Stoops and Mike Stoops, they both said something right on the money um, earlier this week. Okay, when addressed by the media, of course, addressing the situation at corner. You know, Dakota Austin you know, did have a rough day at the office against the Houston Cougars. And, again, I know he wasn't the only one. Other Sooners definitely uh, sharing the blame of the loss. You know, you play as a team, you lose as a team. Dakota Austin's corner spot right now, it's wide open, okay? Um, that spot's not his. It is like a tryout for his corner position. It's like they're going back to early August in two days. I mean, he could retain the spot, but he's going to have to play a lot better. He's have to show a lot more than what we've seen. And um, it could go to Parrish Cobb, you know, the freshman who saw playing time as early as the first half in that game because of the struggles. In fact, you know, you know Mike Stoops is even moving Jordan Thomas, the other corner, to the other side to try to do anything and everything to break the momentum of the Houston passing game, especially on third down, which we documented on the post-game show, beat it like a dead horse, that the Sooners, when it came to third down, uh, it was miserable for him because Houston had double digits and third down conversions, the biggest reason why I think they won the game. But that corner that Dakota Austin once occupied, it is up for grabs, big time. So, you know, definitely keep an eye on that. Um, something to keep an eye on, too, Baker Mayfield. During Bob Stoops' weekly press conference on Monday on Labor Day, even though, you know, Mayfield played a good game, it wasn't one of his best. Um, that's me saying it. Bob Stoops said something interesting. He said that Mayfield was trying a little too hard. Okay, and that's possible. You're the leader of the team trying to make plays. You're in the heat of the moment. That can happen. Stoops said, Bob Stoops said, that Mayfield should have basically got rid of the ball sooner at times and also, too, should have taken what the defense was giving him. Is he right? You know, perhaps, perhaps. When you're a quarterback that plays 90 miles an hour, that plays with high intensity like Baker Mayfield does on one hand, that's hard for him to do because, again, he really thinks on the fly. Spontaneous, he's a leader of the team, but he does things, you know, that, that other quarterbacks that we've seen in Oklahoma haven't really done before. He kind of reminds me of Johnny Manziel in a way. Not just as far as his decision-making. I'm talking about the Manziel when he was at Texas A&M, not the pro Johnny Manziel. But Mayfield really does a lot of things off improvisation. But on the other hand, if it means 
not risking fumbling because he did lose a fumble, you know, in the second half against Houston, which was critical, and also too um, taking some sacks. You'd rather see Mayfield do what's best for the offense. You know, take what the defense gives you, and then and then basically make them make the next move. Okay, because sometimes when you hold a little too long, and of course there's no mystery that Mayfield likes to do this. Sometimes you could play it, and, you know, you you could play it into the defense's hands, and I'm sure. You know, Houston defense have been watching so much film on Baker Mayfield. They knew that was one of the things that he liked to do is hold the ball. So they you know, were, were waiting for that. And at times, played right into the Cougars' hands. Um, as far as injuries go, well, you know, Samaj P. Ryan, it looks like he's going to be fine. Um, although, keep an eye on the shoulder. Um, good news was that um, it affected the muscle. It did not cause any structural damage. Again, no structural damage to the shoulder. And... I expect him to play against Louisiana Monroe. Now, for how long? Ah, who the heck knows, okay? If the Sooners have this game in hand like we think they will, shouldn't get too many touches. Of course, you really need P. Ryan. I, I would think use him, you know, don't, don't use him a whole lot. Use him sparingly and, if possible, so that he can be ready for the Buckeyes. Um, he wasn't the only offensive player, though, that was affected by shoulder injury. Stephen Parker, the safety, you might remember early on, had a shoulder issue as well. But his... After effects were more of soreness. In fact, he came back into the game, um, you know, with protection on that shoulder. But again, he was sore after the game. But but nothing structurally done to um, to affect him as far as the future. And a couple of guys that didn't play but might get some playing time, if not this week, but certainly next week against Ohio State, more of a possibility. Linebacker Curtis Bolton, of course, the uh, patellar tendon strain that's been troubling him previously, and Dahu Green. Has had um, previous injury as well. Didn't see him against Houston, but of course the Sooners, you know, could use all the receiving help uh, that uh, they could get. So for the Sooners, they could win this game by 35 points and still look like crap doing it. I know Louisiana Monroe won, but it was against Southern FCS team. ULM is not a good team, and it's, it's really that simple. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to the Warhawks. A year ago, two and eleven, and one of their wins was against a one of the worst teams in FBS football in New Mexico State. And by the way, that game, Warhawks only won by seven points. So they were even in danger of losing that one. New head coach is uh, Matt Viator. And, you know, offensively is where the optimism is for the Warhawks. Again, coming off an opening season win, there are two main runners in this game, the running back and uh, Ben uh, Luckett, as well as the quarterback and Garrett Smith, the dual threat quarterback, and, of course, the Sooners knows what it's like to face a dual-threat QB. They saw one last week in Greg Ward, Jr. Um, both Smith and Lockett for ULM over a combined 260 yards rushing, over 260. But the best athlete on the team is going to be um, it's going to be um, Ajaya Holly, And he's a guy that, um, you know, he's, he's the main threat. But he only had five receptions last week. And I would imagine that if you are ULM, what do you want to do? Same thing that Houston did. Try to control the clock, especially early, and keep the chains moving, keep the OU offense on the sidelines as much as possible. But they'll have to do it probably in a different fashion. I think they'll try to do it more with a ground attack, in my opinion. Um, take time off the clock, and again, try to keep OU's high-potent offense on the sideline and, and frustrate them that way. It certainly worked for Houston. Of course, they did it through third-down pass conversions. I wouldn't be surprised if ULM ran the ball a lot more than they um, passed. That would not surprise me just from the clock perspective. They know that they're a big underdog. Again, this is one of those games that's a schedule filler for the Sooners. They'll pay ULM anywhere from $500 to $1 million for making the trip from Louisiana to Norman. Say, here's your check. Do whatever you like with it. For the next three and a half hours, um, we're going to win this game. That's, I'm sure what the message is to ULM non-verbally. Um, just a typical Power 5 game against a Group of 5 team or FCS team. Unless you look at last week with Appalachian State, and they almost, you know, shocked the hell out of Tennessee, almost uh, beat the Volunteers. But rarely does that happen. The Sooners, again, the main thing that, they're, that you're looking for, if you're saying, well, if they win by five, five touchdowns and they don't look great in doing it, what are you looking for? You're looking for improvements in the areas that you didn't have last week, okay? Again, just the decision-making of Mayfield. Again, he didn't play a bad game. In fact, statistically, he looked good. But when he has an opportunity to get rid of the ball earlier than he should as opposed to taking a sack, We'll see if he does that. We'll see how the coverages work out, especially against Holly, who, like I said, is the best athlete on this ULM team. 
seeing how they do there. And um, big thing is, is come fourth quarter time, if we still see Baker Mayfield, if we still see P. Ryan, if we still see Mixon, if we still see almost all the OU starters come fourth quarter in this game, is a little tighter than what we thought, then there's major problems, okay? Because this is the last opportunity that the Sooners will have to get some of the kinks worked out and get ready for the Buckeyes. Because, again, the next three games after these, after the uh, ULM game, Ohio State's ranked in the top five. TCU and Texas are ranked in the top 20. Those are your next three opponents right there, your next three. So ULM, on paper, they look like the easiest game of the season, even easier than Kansas as it would appear now. So for the Sooners, play crisp football. Um, secondary needs to bounce back. And you have to have that foundation of getting into good habits. And, you know, although this is not a game where you're going to be playing against the greatest competition, the good habits have to start now and avoid getting into those traps that you had last week, especially um, with the third down issue. The Sooners are going to win in this game. I don't think they're going to cover only because 46 points is a ridiculous amount. Anytime somebody gives you 46 points, you're kind of playing into that danger because you never know how the game's going to end if the Sooners are going to give up junk points, um, the reserves, or they're going to give up junk points to the ULM starters. Okay, You never know. So that 46-point margin to me is too dicey to say, okay, I'll give you the points. Oh, you will win, and they'll win convincingly, but 46 is too many, so I'll take the Warhawks plus the 46 for the Sooners to roll. I'll have my post game late Saturday, early Sunday, and what should be a Sooner victory. It better be, and it better be a convincing one because, again, for the Sooners, you got 11 games, starting with this one, to get it right. you got to win all 11, get some help, and you're in the college football playoff, anything short of that, and it could still be a nice year, but not the year you thought it would be. Got the Warhawks this week, and, of course, Big Bad, the Ohio State from Columbus, making that trip to Norman. But I think about this game first. It's on pay-per-view, so best endeavors in trying to watch this game if you haven't already purchased it. Take care.